Good morning, folks. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, a bit more blue pizza this week because I've stood up at a table so you can see what I'm doing. Um, plan this week is uh, a little bit less structured than normal, but we're going to sort of wing it a bit. We're going to build a baseboard. Um, the idea being that over the next 10 weeks we have, um, or we're going to build a layout of the box. We have a box, a really useful 77 litre plastic box. Um, and we've got a BB-17 baseboard, and I'm also probably going to look at putting on a fiddle yard to one end. I'm not going to do it all today, it's going to take some time, so it's going to take us the next 10 weeks to do this. Um, but there's, there's 10 weeks between now and the uh, 50th anniversary celebrations of the Legacy Model Railway um, thingy, uh, exhibition thing. Uh, so we're looking at building a layout to put on show there at Jubilee Hall in July. So that's the plan. I'm going to switch cameras quickly in a few seconds, and... Uh, We'll start building a baseboard, but we did a BB-17 and a BB-21 wanting to go in this box here. So I'll see you in a second. So it should on mute anyway. You can leave that. Right, you should just be able to see the uh, dining table cam this time. Uh, we can't work on the normal desk that we're on because it's just not room to get the camera and everything on. So we're on the, on the works dining table. So box, baseboard's going to go in here. Hopefully you can hear us. Okay. Um, Tina's on the comments again this morning. So pop any questions through uh, as we go. Um, so we're going to build a BB21, which is the ex can be used as an extension board to the BB17 or as a fiddle yard. We're going to use this as a fiddle yard. Um, and then we're going to we'll build the BB17. Or we'll do the BB17 first. The BB17 is the main baseboard, comes in two parts. Um, and it's really straightforward to build. It's laser cut MDF, both boards are laser cut MDF. Easy to work with. Um, the only issue with working with MDF is that ideally you could do with painting it before you uh, build your layout, if your layout's gonna be stored in a um, damp environment, like a shed or a loft or something. If it's in the, in the house, it won't be a problem. Um, and also for putting your, fixing your track down, you can't really use track pins. You need to use glue and or glue or well, no, glue is probably the best thing actually um so we'll use probably copy decks it smells really fishy and disgusting but we'll probably use copy decks uh, in a couple of weeks time or we can use yuhu the only problem with yuhu it works really well but it's hard to get the track back up if you need to copy decks is water based so you can lift it back up and it's kind of springy stringy stuff so it sort of allows you to prize the track back up so we're going to take a look at the bb17 and the various parts that come with it um the kit I should have arranged these first beforehand, but I didn't get a chance. We have, we'll separate these parts up. We have our bases for the board. We have two end panels, two back seam panels, and then we've got two fronts, lots of spare bits that we don't need that have fallen out of the sheets where they've been cut. Don't need those. And we have some braces, four braces, and two spacers and a couple of nuts and bolts. Uh, we use wing nuts because they're easy to do, easy to work with, you don't need any tools or anything. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna assemble this in two parts. We do a left and a right-handed section um, so we can bolt them together. Obviously, if you build two right-handed ones or two left-handed ones, you're in a bit of a pickle. Um, and we're gonna use deluxe materials Super fatic glue, you can use this, you can use laser cut kit glue, you can use Eva stick wood glue, Wilco's wood glue, anything you like. Any old wood glue will do, but that's what we've got. Why well, not use birch ply for the base You can use birch ply, we would love to use birch ply. Um, the only reason we you don't use birch ply is laser cutting birch ply is an absolute pain. There are people out there that produce laser cut birch ply, birch baseboards, and they are amazing baseboards. Um, we find birch very hard to work with on our laser cutters, so we go with MDF. Um, it's an easier material for us to, to, to work with, to be honest. We've done birch plywood baseboards as a test in the past, um, but on the laser, the problem is if you, if you, the nature of the material being made up of layers of wood, the top layer the, or the outer surface layers are usually really good layers. Inside that, you've got no idea what's going on. They use the cheaper wood, they use um, slightly faulty wood and all sorts in there. So you end up with patches of resin and patches of glue. If you hit a solid block of glue halfway through a cut, it can ruin the entire baseboard. 
Whereas with this, we pretty much get 100% success rate with cutting the baseboards. Now, if we had a, a larger lasers, more powerful lasers, we probably could work with that. But with the ones that we work on, um, it's just not practical and not commercially viable for us. So um, if you want a plywood baseboard, fine. There's plenty of manufacturers out there that can help you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to separate this up into the parts I need to build one side of the layout. And then we should start gluing it together. And as you can see, or as you will see, these go together really, really easily. I'm just making sure I've got the right parts. So we build one side first and don't end up dropping a clanger. So we need two braces and a spacer. Spacers we won't actually use until we've finished the whole assembly of both pieces. But as you will see, these go together pretty simply. So I'm just going to slot everything together just to test that everything's going to go together without any problems. There's no reason why you can't use exterior ply. Yeah, of course, if you're sawing it, then yeah, go for it. We just we laser cut it, and we'd have a heck of a job trying to cut. Um, That's what he's asking. Me. Yeah, you yeah, you can use it. No, oh. We, oh, we could. We could oh, we can't. We can't. We can't. No. Baseball. We would love to be able to, but we just don't have the gear to cut the stuff from the trade. So for the same reasons as just, just mentioned, the, the glues and everything in the, in the material make it an absolute pig to cut. Um, so in an ideal world, we would love to, um, but we just can't. So I'm just doing a quick dry fit of this to make sure I've got all the right parts where I want them. So that's going to go in there like that. Should do. Yes, it's in. And that slots into there. So as you'll see though, these aren't difficult boards to build at all. So that's the basics of the board just slotted together. I'm going to take the pieces in a minute and I'm going to glue it all together. But that shows you the, the basic construction of this. So what I'm going to do now is the really boring bit and start applying glue to everything. Uh, yes, we want to. We will do these. These accept the standard kind of Pico and Gauge Master point motors, Hornby point motors, that kind of thing. Um, we will be doing some as soon as I possibly can. I'll get some done. Um, I did have a think, think about doing it for, for this particular project, but we want to kind of crack on with this. So I haven't really got time to design another baseboard and get the layout built in 10 weeks. So, um, but yeah, we can do it, certainly. Right, I'm just gonna glue the front on as well here before that sets too much. So I'm doing a bit of blob, blob of super fatic on each of the joints here. I need to work fairly quick because I don't want this center piece to join too to glue in too quickly. I want to just lift that up. Rachel says she's loving the look of the new RM for that. Ah, good. Excellent. Um, we've got a lot more still to do on it. Um, and thank you to everybody that has joined the club so far. Um, we've got loads more to do with the VIP section or the first class section as it's now going to be called. Um, Lots more work, but we are certainly getting there. Um, and so far, the conversations are starting to get going, which is brilliant. Excuse my shaky hands trying to do this. This is more nerve-wracking working on this and doing it this way than it is normally sat at the desk. So there, there's the basics of the bottom of the baseboard now. So that's the base frame of that come together. A little bit of glue down here. A bit more glue down there. Another bit in the joints. But as you'll see, these go together really quickly, and within hopefully about half an hour, we should have the makings of a baseboard for a new project. Which, if you're cutting it yourself on a table saw or whatever, might take you a bit longer. So I'm hoping this is gonna work out all right. So we have no idea what we're going to do on this either when we've, when we've built the baseboard. We've got no plans whatsoever yet for what's going on the layout. So I'm probably going to give Sam a shout in a bit if he's free from downstairs. 
and we'll have a bit of a chat about ideas and what we could put on here how we could make this layout look and if anybody's got any suggestions for things we could do um feel free to shout right i'm just waiting for this to um, Ian, set a little bit so I don't think any of us have lasers capable of cutting this MDF. My laser pointer certainly can't. So could you talk about how we would cut this best cuts or final blade drilling, etc.? If you use an MDF at home, then I would just use a panel saw, to be honest. Um, just to find a, a half decent sharp panel saw will we'll do the job. Obviously, MDF, you need to be in the well ventilated area or wear a mask for fine particles. If you're using ply, again, just use a panel saw, um, unless you've got access to a decent table saw or something like that. I know Fran was on about building baseboards um, in the railway models group last night in the micro layout section, and he's using a table saw. And he, he created, he built a really nice baseboard, similar to this, a little bit bigger, um, with some extra features on it, and it looked really good. Um, you can cut this with a, you know, we're probably going to look at putting um, a tunnel portal on at least one end of this, and you could cut that out with a, a fret saw, coping saw. You can't really cut it with a knife, it's too hard. Right, so that's that bit. This is starting to glue nicely, so all going to do now is pop that bit in there. As you can see, within a few minutes, I don't think we've even been live for 10 minutes and we've nearly got a baseboard. Junction says congrats on the new site. Fantastic. Cheers, Jason. I'm hoping it does catch on with a bit of luck. Um, we've got loads of conversations going. We're looking at doing, um, we've got the special interest groups and stuff in there. We're looking at also having groups for individuals that would like um, a thread for their layout. So on other forums and things, you've got a, a thread that's dedicated to a particular layout. Um, we're looking at giving the option to have to be an application process, put it that way, you'd have to apply for a thread, not because we want to vet everybody, but because we have to set it up ourselves. Um, so we're looking at setting up a, an area with, um, <laughs> you don't know what glue I'm using. Um, yeah, we're looking at setting an area up with threads for a layout or a group for a layout. So if you wanted to discuss your layout and post all of your updates and things for your particular project, um, in one place rather than just getting um, lost in the main thread of, of, of chat on there you would have your own um, your own group for that for your layout which I think would be quite useful right I'm just going to stand this up you want a bit to see the end of this while I do it but I'm just going to put the glue put some glue on the end here and then the end board goes on then we've got half a baseboard and what's that how long we've we been live not long about 10 minutes yeah 13 minutes we've been live and in 13 minutes we've nearly got a baseboard um, Sue so. says a canal scene, and Roger says a clay dry scene. Ooh, two good ideas there. Two good ideas. Um, ooh, it's got me thinking now. Would like to do a canal scene. Um, I wonder whether I might be. To, yeah, what I might do then before we do anything major like glue the baseboards together, I may look at um, hacking one of them about then to create a canal or something. Clay drying scene would be good. Um, also, right, I know you can't see the end of this. I'm going to, let me see if I can do that. You can see that. So, this literally slots on the end. So, it's so simple. You hardly really need any clamps or anything because everything just slots together nicely. I've got glue all over the table now, but I'll clear that off in a minute. Stockyard, yeah, that'd be good. Um, we've got some new kits of various things going on at the moment so i'm hoping we can use some of those if i can get them finished right a bit of glue down the back and up that corner yeah that's true that's true that's true but i did some good ideas here yeah it's going to take me ages to choose what to do now, isn't it? <laughs> um, right, there we go. Well, there is that, yeah. The, what's it? Um, the White River, yeah. Why not? We've only got a small area, but we can see what we can fit in. Um, 
Right, so there we go, half a baseboard already in 15 minutes. That's not bad, is it? So I'm going to put this one to one side. I'm not going to do the here's one I made earlier thing. I'm going to have to build another one now. So you'll have to bear with me while I do that. So that's that one. I'll put that down there, let that dry. In fact, no, I'll put it at the back so I don't get glue all over the floor. Put it on there. Uh, these are just shy of 40 pounds, I think. Um, we really found a bit of tissue now. I don't have any tissue, just bear with me. Um, make a bit out of that. Just, just less than 40 quid. I think it might be 39.99, something like that. 38.99. No, something like that. Not too bad anyway. Um, and then the extension, the middle extension is roughly 20 ish. Just less than 20 for the middle extension, which we'll build in a minute. Okay, so we've done one side. Do the side now. In fact, what I might do is build. I'll do it in a slightly different order to make it easier. Don't know. Thinking on my feet here now. Right. So we've just done that side. Let me turn that one round so I can see it. So I know which one I'm doing. Okay. We've just done the right hand end of the baseboard, so we need to do the left hand one now. So we're going that way. That's going on. That end there, that's right. So we need to put that on the bottom there. Right, okay. So that's going up there. Yeah, um, crikey. Now, the tin mine would be fun to do. We have plans for doing one of those. Um, how quickly we can get the kit together for the tin mine, I'm not sure. We have drawings, which are nearly ready. Um, how quickly we could get the kit in production, I don't know. Right, front's in. Andrew says we put it out the boat. I think we might do, actually. Um, yeah, let's put a, we'll, put, we'll put a poll up in the Railway Modellers Club, um, and then you can um, have your say in there, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have a bit of a think and see what we can do. Um, yeah, I don't, we don't want this to be a full promotional session for the Railway Modellers Club, but it's free to join. The basic level is free to join, so we'll put the poll in the main club room on there. Um, if anybody wants to join that's watching this, hasn't joined, just go to community.railwaymodellers.com. So Railway Modellers with an S, community.railwaymodellers.com. Um, sign up. It's free to sign up. Just pop your email address in, choose a password, click become a member, and you're in. That's it. Really quickly, quick and easy. Um and then I'll put a poll up in the main club room for this then, and we'll, we'll have a bit of a vote on it and see what people say. We could end up with about 10 different layouts out of all of it eventually, so it would be nice to build every single one, but um, um, not, the, perhaps not practical. I think it's Ailes Mead. I've got it on their Polydorus project, so I'm trying to play Zoya. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I need to find some pictures of... A suitable thing to model but um yeah is that what the two big towers are up at back of st hostel when you can see them is that what they are now a modern version of the triers you haven't seen them those big silos you can see when you look to the right of the a a390 look over the back of st hostel you can see them, but what's that that must be what they are must be the modern version of, of them right so that's that should hopefully be the correct way yeah that's going to work that way so that's going to be that backboard go on We're nearly done nearly done the baseboard it's amazing it's so quick these right it's glue everywhere but we've nearly built a baseboard and it's roasting up here absolutely roasting Roger's asked whether you'd supply, whether you considered supplying curved edges for a radius board. Um, we've looked at doing corners, oops, corner, corner boards. I don't know whether we would do curved ones as such. Um, there's probably, yeah, there's no reason why we can't. They're quite 
time consuming to manufacture. Um, I suppose the the only problem, well, it would have to be a fixed radius board. Yeah, um, like you said, wouldn't the curved edge boards have to have, a, have various radius? Yeah, they'd have to they'd have to be a fixed radius because if you start putting tabs on pieces and then bending them, the tabs are always in a different position because the geometry changes. Geometry, yeah, geometry changes. Um, so you'd have to get a bit clever with the um, position of tabs and things. So I think we'd probably do a fixed radius board. Um, otherwise, we could do kind of chamfered corner boards, which is something that I think Dylan started drawing up. All right, I'm just waiting for this to glue glue to go off a bit in here. How would you justify an LNER Cornish tin line? I know, that's difficult because Dylan's been banging on about us doing LNER. He didn't really wants us to do LNER, and that's a bit difficult, isn't it? Um, an LNER Cornish tin mine would be really mixing things up. I'm, I'm all for running whatever you want on your layout, but I think that would push it a little bit too far, wouldn't it? Um, right, nearly got this one done as well. So I'm just waiting for this to glue a little bit, wait for the glue to set on here. I can pick it up and stand the end piece on. The other one's looking okay. It's still wet in places, but it's coming together. All right. Good morning. Oh, morning, Elizabeth. Glad to see you being productive this morning. Mm -hmm. Cheeky monkey. Hello, father, it says. <laughs> I thought you were at college, actually. Uh, how far from Tintagel? How far from um, That's a good question. We are Tintagel's on the north coast. Oh, I don't know, 30 miles, perhaps? Something like that. We are. Yeah, Tintagel's up on the north coast. We're closer to the south coast at the moment where we are in Truro. Corner baseboard. Corner baseboard, yeah. We need to do corner baseboards. They'd be much better. Well, might give you a lot more flexibility. Um, a corner baseboard on these would work. And I know quite a lot of people have made their own corner baseboards out of these. They've hacked them and they look really good. Um, so I think we should certainly do one. Right, I'm just waiting for the glue to go off on this a bit. So when I, t when I turn it over, it doesn't dribble all over the table. In fact, what I'll do... Now I'm torn now, you see, between doing a Cornish-inspired layout or doing one that's going to use the retaining walls that we're working on. I'll put that on the right way here. Retaining walls that we're working on, or whether to do a yard or a station and do an LNER station. I really don't know now. Too many choices. We'll have to do a bit of research, yeah. I think it probably would be a good one. Um, yeah. Right, there we go. Baseboard nearly done. Then we'll build the middle section, which will probably turn into a fiddle yard, I think, rather than extend it beyond the box itself. So that is that main baseboard done. So in less than 25 minutes, we actually have a baseboard. And what I'll do in a minute, if Sam's free, is I'll give him a shout when I've got these, the other one glued together, and we'll have a bit of a natter about some ideas, um, some of the things that have been put forward. And okay, yeah. I've said that, how about fixed length tanks with extended slots? Uh, I think I know what you mean. Um, yeah, I could probably make that work. Yeah. Another yeah. different Andrew said, like, not to be eight boards to make a 360 degree circle. Yeah. The difficult thing with doing any of this fancy stuff to go around corners with a laser cutter is the laser cutter only cuts in one direction as in down so you can't do chamfers and fancy corners like that so it's difficult um so it needs a bit of thought about corner brackets and that kind of thing so there we go we've got the second part of the baseboard now so we now have that one and here's one that we literally did make earlier that's the other part 
So we have a baseboard. In under 25 minutes, we have a complete baseboard. Roger's asked whether the glue that you're using dries much faster than... It, it dries quicker than Eva stick, yeah. It's still not over, overly quick. There's still some bits that are wet on here, but it's it's grabbed really quite quite quickly. Um, so it's just it's super fatic. It's about four or five quid a pot, last ages. Um, does come with a fine tip applicator as well. You can use it for laser cut kits and all sorts of things and other card work. Um, balsa wood, any woods, plywood, whatever. Uh, so there we go, nice a baseboard. We have the basics of it. I'm gonna put this back to one side and let it dry even more while I build the other piece, the extension. And I'll show you the plans for the ex with the extension. Put that on that chair over there. Okay, so this is a BB21. I've got glue everywhere here. Um, BB21, now this is a middle section or an extension for the end. So we're gonna use it as a fiddle yard, I think, but I'll show you how it can be used for extending your baseboards as well. Exactly the same construction, except for you've not got solid ends this time. You've got these extra, these um, uh, braces, which go in this part. So they will just go in there like that, into the bottom of there, and there we go. Simon's asked what's the best way to prep and paint me. Baseboards. Prepping and paint the baseboards. To be honest, you don't need to do a lot. You can lightly sand them if you want. Um, I'm probably going to go to B and Q next couple of days and pick up some. Uh, what's it called? Eggshell, eggshell satin thingy, not gloss. The other one, uh, or a, just a, a primer. Um, a grey primer would be fine. And um, I'm probably going to paint the outside of the baseboard on this as well because. Dan Everson did a really nice job with a little quarry which he built on one of the smaller versions of these and he's painted the outside of the baseboard in yellow and black stripes or yellow and grey stripes and rusted it and it looks really really good it looks like it's the the, the baseboard itself is properly part of the layout rather than just being you know the, the thing that holds the layout it's part of it's a feature of the layout so I think we're going to do do something like that I think might not get quite as fancy as Dan did um but I'm just going to put these in here. I'm doing this a slightly different way because it'll be easier than lifting parts out of the baseboard to glue this in. So if I glue those into there, roughly, I'm just making sure I've got them the right way around so the tabs go in the right places. And I haven't I've got them. No, I have. That's right. Short tab at the bottom. That's right. These baseboards will only go together one way, so if I get any parts wrong, I'm in a mess. Um, Andrew's asking if you could put the two baseboards together, one upside down, to make a secure box for storage. Mm, you could do. There is, they will slot together like that. They won't, obviously there's no fixings to hold them together, but they can be put together like that. Um, the main, the, 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 the whole design of this, though, is based on the idea, on the idea that you can put them in, in the really useful boxes, the really useful 77 litre Christmas tree box. Um, this was originally designed for a layout that Phil Parker from BRM magazine was building um, for uh, what are they called Rapido in Canada. There was a competition that they were running and they wanted a micro layout to give away. So Phil asked us to knock up a baseboard. Um, so the BB17 is all Phil's fault. Um, it came about from an idea. Phil said he needed a box. Uh, a baseboard that would fit in a box that he could take on a plane to Canada um, that would survive the journey and be easy to, easy to work with and not take up loads of room at the winner's house. And this is the uh, this is the result. Okay, these are moving about a bit because I'm trying to do it so that I can slot this into it. Said about visiting the place in Snowdonia. Um, classy Brennan Capricuri. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> then you can include white water, kayaking, rock climbers, etc. Oh, crikey, that would be a job, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, good to do. Um, why do I have some of the place names down here? They're really hard to pronounce. You can guess, and then you find out when you've lived here for a year, you've been pronouncing it wrong all the time. Okay, base of that one's done. Again, 
I keep saying they're really quick, but they are really quick. And that's somebody at the door. So it's time for Lola to join in the live stream now. <laughs> um, have a delivery. Obviously. She's finished now. She's done her job. There we go. Made her presence felt. So there we are. This is nearly done now. Again, just got to wait for the glue to go off a bit so we can pick it up and move it around. I'm going to run a bit of glue down there again. Loader's connected to the door. Right, so that's that bit. The glue down the joints. I'm not, I'm just running. Well, you can see I'm just running a bit of glue into all of the joints just to add a bit of extra grip. Not essential, but it won't do any harm. We just need to leave that for a minute or two now and uh, talk amongst yourselves while this dries. Yeah, now I think uh, in. We have we now have within just over half an hour we have a baseboard and the makings of a fiddle yard for a new layout. So no faffing around with screwing or anything or drilling and stuff like that. MDF might not be the material of choice for a lot of modelers, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but for us, we like it because it's easy to work with. Um, and if you have a look in the um, railway modelers group, there's quite a few layouts built on these boards. I think Roger's built a few. Um, say Dan, Dan Everson's um, little quarry, which is on its way down to us here at Truro. It should be here. It'll be on display at reception here in the next week or so. That should be being collected today. Hopefully, it'll make the journey okay, and that's going to go on display. Um, I'll get plenty of pictures up of that in the group, in the railway modelers club. Um, when that's arrived, we can have a look and see what he did with that. So, right, that's our fiddle yard. Okay, so I'll put this to one side while that dries a little more. And then. What's the total length of the three boards? Oh, now you're asking. I've got a tape measure, I have to tell you. I don't know, no idea. Um, well, they're all the same, they're all the same length. Each board is the same. This is 555 millimetres ish on that. So you're looking at what's that? 1.11 1, 1 metres. So 111 centimetres. 111 centimetres. Yeah, is your total length of the two boards together. And here's a man in a checked shirt. Yeah, come on. Come on in. Yeah, I've just finished building the basics of the baseboard. Um, do you want to pop up? There's a thing there. Do you want to put a, uh, yeah, a talky thing so they can hear you? Let's see the mic on. Alan, so could you do a double height end panel to provide a drop section? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, if you send us a sketch of what you're thinking of, we can probably do most of it. Um, right, in terms of fixing these together, it's really straightforward. We lie them on the back. Like that. Each kit comes with two fixings, four washers, or two bolts, four washers, and two wing nuts, and some spacers. The idea here is you put a bolt and a washer through there, you hang two spacers on, like that. And you do the same at the bottom. It's ages to take a bolt off of a, a nut off a bolt and you do it on you. Right, that goes through there. Then those two should slot together nicely like that. Can't get any simpler than this. We're joining a layout together. I've never actually seen one of these together. No, but we just go out the door, don't we? Yeah. Cut, cut them, they just disappear. Um, You don't really need any tools, you don't really need a spanner because it sort of grips itself anyway. Just tighten the wing nuts up a bit. So 
harder doing it upside down and from the other way than it is if you're looking at it. All right. Nearly there. Uh, Gordon said, said Sam's making making chip shirts come back into fashion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to get back into fashion. <laughs> um, Morning, all everyone. Right there, we go. We have a baseboard assembled. Done. Now the, this is the, this is what should happen now. You see, is that when we're ready to put the layout away? Just those nice legs, Sam. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cheers, you probably, probably switch the camera actually now. You want to switch back to? The, oh no, you can't because the mic's playing. Hey, put both, put both, put both cameras on, and leave that that one mute. Leave my phone yeah. muted. That's it. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Right. Okay. Now you can see human pe human beings on the screen. So the idea being that that with a bit of luck. You have tried this, haven't you, before now? When, when I first designed it, <laughs> okay. I've not done it right, here we for go. a long time, but when I first designed it, it fitted, it fitted in. Oh, there look, we go. Look at that. Yeah, there we go. And it sits proud just a little bit at the top because you've got a bit of extra clearance on the lid. Spot on. There you go. It's all right, that, isn't it? Yeah, very good. So, Spot on. Um, and then what we can do is we can make our fiddle yard. We'll take that back out again. Yeah. Um, we will use this BB21 when we do actually build the layout when we've worked out what we're doing loads of ideas come through this morning for all sorts of things covering every I mean county in the country every era county yeah, every, era, every era every county we can add this onto the end if you can just about see that that will be the BB21 on the end of the fiddle yard or if you wanted to hide the fiddle yard we can turn that round and go that way so the backboards at the the back so operator could put have stuff operational stuff for that end so locos and whatever ready to go onto the layout we'll put a hole in there tunnel portal or something to act as a what's it scenic break scenic that's the break. word scenic break um act as a scenic break through there onto the main layout and away we go yeah can you just, sorry, can you just confirm the railway modelers? Um, yeah. Okay. Community.railwaymodelers.com. Yeah. That's it. So, question is, what do you think? We should, really, what do you think we should do with this? Any ideas? Um, put on it. I don't know about era, but I was thinking, could we have we got enough room to go from urban to rural, so we can try and showcase. Mm. Urban kits, yeah, and rural kits. I don't know. I don't know if we've got enough room for that. We could probably. I'm just thinking about coming out of a, mm. not necessarily a station, maybe coming out of like the edge of a town, so suburban. Yeah. Into idea, I don't know. Mm. I mean, if you left it to me, it'd be between Manchester and Derby, and, and <laughs> it'd be steam era. Yeah, um, but that, yeah, I don't know, right. something like that. Well, we've got. The layout Ian built for us, Dun Street Yard, which he's going to put pictures up of today in yep. the group, um, in the in the club app thing. Um, that's all really modern image, yeah, um, and doesn't feel it's all certainly urban and very grotty and I don't mean grotty as in not very good, I mean run grotty down, as in weathered, down, as in yeah, weathered, yeah, yeah, weathered yeah. and filthy. Um, it's that kind of appearance. Um, so maybe we should do something that's a bit more edge of town. Maybe a station. I'm just thinking of Loughborough Station because Loughborough Station is pretty much right on the edge of Loughborough. It's right on the on the outskirts, and you're only a few hundred yards from the station, and you're into countryside. Okay. But the other side, you've got the brush factory. You've got you've got Loughborough Station behind it. You've got brush factory where they've made locos for years or whatever, or the bits for locos for years. Yeah. Behind it, which is very urban and grotty, and what's it? But then you, right next to that, the other side of the road, you've got fields, more or less. So we could do something like that, or so a we could have the, of that. the station here, and maybe yeah. the the fact factory is a back scene, yeah, and then the back scene blends into open rural yeah. scenery, and this part just, turns into just two main lines, yeah. Maybe yeah, I don't know. Not? Yeah, we could use the retaining wall that I'm working on for if we flipped it, if we put the if we put the fiddle yard that end. end on the on the urban end. Yep. then that can be all built up and grotty and can have the retaining wall which we can use as a as a tunnel tunnel portal to take us through onto the 
onto the fiddle yard, yep. and this end can just be fields and disappear into. So it'd be it just locos leaving yeah. the station, yeah, and going in and that waves. direction. Yeah, that could work, wouldn't it? Yeah, bit of platform, factory at the back. Wouldn't even actually need to model the station itself. We could model steps down to the platform. Yeah, there's a lot because in a lot of places, yeah, we don't wouldn't actually need to model the station itself. We could just do the effect of the end of the platform. And it, it could even do model it so the platform disappears slightly underneath. I don't yeah. know. I'm just thinking of some of the larger stations where the platform is, you know, underneath. It's underneath, it goes down, underneath down and, come, to and comes, yeah. out, comes yeah. out into the, the open air part of it. We could do something there and be quite crafty with it and put it in that corner. Maybe retaining walls at the back and maybe some sort of custom. Just like the last twenty thing. foot of the platform. Yeah, just just a bit. Yeah, just the last bit. Just, yeah. yeah, and then so you can get your signal away. on there, platform yeah. signal, and then away you go. Yeah. So we can use sort of like yeah, weight, that. like um, trackside details here, can't yeah. we? You know the general rubbish that you get just outside the station. Yeah. And then it gradually on a train journey, it gradually gets prettier, yeah, doesn't yeah, prettier, it? So yeah. we can go yeah. from like rubbish to yeah flowers almost. Yeah, a couple sort of containers thing. and some. What's it? Discarded wheel, you know. What's it? We axle wheels, axles, whatever. Yeah, that Bits sort of thing. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Wagon parts, whatever. Speed and restriction then, signs would be there, wouldn't yeah. they? And then coming out into rural, and this tends, this is more countryside. Some trees and bits and bobs, just chunk, just to blend it. Yeah, that'd work nice, actually. Yeah, that could work, couldn't it? And depending on the era, we'd have the cable trunking on there. And uh, yeah, that's been around a while, isn't it? Is it the AX one one for the little? Oh, the platform. No, I'll no. go the wrong code. Oh, no, X for no, 114. What's 114? No, you probably haven't given me the right code. The, right um, the little really? fuse box things that I put on the diorama. Oh, yeah, did. Yeah, what yeah, are they? Yeah. Uh, you know, those little boxes that they put the power in and all that. I can't remember yeah, the code. Yeah, line now. side equipment things. Yeah, line yes, side yes, equipment. Yes, 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 so line yeah. side equipment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that would sort of be here, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then fade into. Yeah, rural stuff. Rural stuff, like that. maybe. We could, we could end up building half a dozen of these over the course of the next six, 12 months, you know, because the amount of ideas that have come through from folks watching it with china clay drying things, yep. depots, all sorts. And I'm, what I'm hoping is that over the next 10 weeks, this may not be finished in 10 weeks, but in 10 weeks we'll have it at a reasonable level where it starts to look layout-ish. Yep. Um, and it's hopefully will illustrate a bit like Ian did with Don Street Yard, you can get a lot of stuff into a small space. You don't need a massive area to build a layout. Okay, you can't set locos running for hours and then going around in circles. So we did discuss earlier doing a a circuit, didn't we? Building extra yeah, just, boards to put a circuit on. Yeah. But from a point of view of the enjoyment of building a layout, you don't need a huge amount. There's a lot of detail you can get into here. Um, and can you put can you put these kits together to if if you want a longer diorama, or do you buy a centre section? We can put is that, centre, is that, yeah, that's we put, the yeah, centre we, section. Yeah, we're going to use that as a, as a fiddle yard, but, okay. but you would normally just unbolt that and, and put, put that, that in. in the middle. So you could put 10 of them in between oh, yeah, if you, you wanted could, to. Yeah, you can have it 16, 20 foot long okay. if you want. So these are your extension packs yeah, for 17 for then? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. The only thing I, I do suggest, I mean, occasionally send out as a freebie to customers if they want them, is that the back, the base, uh, the back seam boards don't join together. So if you want something that's a bit more sturdy at the back here, because that's a little bit of play in that, we have loads of offcuts downstairs, and occasionally I've sent out you know, the strips the off strip. the front of the... Yeah. When we have the BB-17, when we cut them, we end up with a piece. We do occasionally throw the parts in, so you just glue that along the back. Yeah. But any old bit of timber will do at the back there just to hold it. But for, for the purposes, once you've got your back seam glued to it, you, if you're gluing thick vaccine paper onto this, that holds it anyway. Um, and when it's in the box, kept in the box, it's fine. But um, yeah, so you can put that on as a thing. The only thing we need to do, not today, but we will do, because we're going to use this as a fiddle yard, this has obviously got the holes on the end for running the cables through and joining. These end boards are solid. So all we need to do next week is drill a couple of holes so we can bolt that onto the end yeah. and the opposite way around. But we don't put holes in these because I want them look, to look nice and clean and flush when you paint it. It all looks nice and smart. Yeah, this is this is always the end of the yeah, diorama. The panel, that yeah. and that is always an end, yeah. isn't it? They're the ones yeah. that are always yeah. in the middle. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. But we're going to repurpose that and put it on the end as a fiddle yard. So I think that's a really around. good idea. And then, having that as your fiddle yard yeah. facing the other way. Yeah. Um, 
and then folks could obviously put the name yeah. of the layout. Yeah. If it was facing how you had it, so yeah. that was facing you, yeah. you'd have that plain back edge there, and this yeah. is where you could perhaps use the PX the yeah, blue yeah, ones, yeah, your, um, there, yeah. your custom yeah. custom name board would go on there next to the side of yeah. the bit that the folks watch well, yeah, when it's operating. Nobody can see, from an operational point of view, nobody can see the gubbins there. Yeah. If, if you're really clever with your the way you join things together is when you're at home and you want to play trains, you could actually just, if you made this symmetrical with your track, so it was exactly, you know, follow the lines on here or whatever with the track, yep. make that symmetrical, you can bolt it on either way, it doesn't matter. So when you're at home, you can sit one side and you can sit looking at the layout while you're operating course, your trains. Yeah. Yeah. When you're on at an exhibition or wherever, swap it around that way and nobody can see the workings. So. But whether we'll go DCC or DC, I don't know, that's another question. We've got to Don't go DCC. I mean, we're going to have to get some sort of sound decoder in well, yeah, your class 20, aren't we? He may have it in, actually. Okay. It's yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a TTS, actually. There we go, then. So, yeah, so, so it's going to have to be DCC. Then. Okay. Tina's poised with more questions. Yeah. Well, Warwick Rivage has asked if there's any news on the warning that Dean Park's asked for. Yes. Uh, the warning that Dean Park's asked for will be cut by this man here, hopefully, sometime between now and Saturday. Not Saturday, Friday. Right. We don't know where Saturdays, between now and Friday. As soon as he's cut one, I know it works. It's being sent up to Dave at Dean Park. He's going to give his all clear, hopefully, when it fits right and fits what he needs. It'll fit what everybody else needs, and we can get it released. So, yes, it's nearly done. But Tina's killing herself with laughing, so I dread to think what's just coming through now in the comments. Oh, it's just said uh, YouTube and Biden have more common wise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, they used to do. Um, yeah, Sam's too young to remember. Yeah, it's yeah, it's all my time, isn't it, Rog? Yeah. Um, it's far too young. Yeah, he's about ten years younger than me. Um, right, so there we go. That's the baseboard. I think we've got, we've got some good ideas. I'm quite excited about doing this. Um, I'm not. I'm not built. I haven't built a layout since I was in my teens. Um, yeah, it's quite good. 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 Yeah, it's quite I'll probably try and find somewhere locally ish that I can photograph something and put on there, yeah, which makes it a little bit more unique, yeah, unique again, then doesn't it? I've just used my phone in the past to take panoramic shots, or um, depending on how we do or what we do building wise, we may be able to get away with the country back scene for the whole length of it because the rest of it will be covered with low relief urban stuff anyway. So, we need the sky, yeah, yeah. we yeah, need yeah. the sky. So, if I've yeah. got anything with fields, yeah, we can use the fields this end and it will just blend in. It's literally just sky needed for that part because buildings would take us up to here anyway. Um, and it may, be only, we, it may be that we only have half a building or so mm -hmm. because we're only going to get small. Yeah, we might just have the bottom end of some shops or something or yeah, something simple and trim it off at the top. So you, from a dist when you look at it from there, you'll see retaining wall and the bottom of a row of high street shops or something there or a road There's or plenty of height isn't yeah. there too yeah well that would be the back of back of some buildings so yeah so we could do grotty walls with some fans and air conditioning units piping pod me ducting and whatever on the back make them look a few cables and bits and bobs that's giving me an idea now for the cables we do the uh line side cabling can't think what the part number is you know, the well, it takes ages to make. It takes ages, that's yes, a pain I, in the neck. That's all I know. There's an A and a B, isn't there? There is an A and a B. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether we can do um, rooted cabling yeah. to go around buildings. So the same the same principle, yeah. but we actually do it rooted with the clip with the cable clips on. Then you can just glue that onto the side of a, an industrial building or a whatever factory wall just for random bits of cable. I yeah. know that's good. Mark Wilson, I think, on Facebook has used it inside his Swindon depot, and he's used it in there on the walls, I think, or is that or outside? He's used it somewhere. I'm just thinking if we root it, it would add a bit of extra interest to it. Okay. More questions? Uh, no, Rachel just said that she reckons a Cornish theme fits for the another anniversary. True. Well, we could do. We could perhaps, obviously, because there's urban scenes down here, we could. We could take inspiration from St. Austell Station or other areas like that because obviously down here you don't have to go very far to be in rural Cornwall. No, Parr and all those little yeah. lost with the old, yeah. all those little sort of stations because Truro doesn't, yeah. you leave Truro and it stays urban. Yeah, you've got, what's the one on the way to Bodmin? Bugle. Bugle, yeah, that would 
that would give you the same. Lost Lost Rivial Park, Bugle, yeah. Bodmin yeah. Parkway, I think that's probably... I haven't been on it. I haven't, I haven't been on that run very often, but I think Bodmin Parkway yeah. is the same as well. Yeah, so we could we could probably and uh, yeah, I think um, St Blaise is probably similar as well. That's a bit more more urban, I suppose. But we could do something with it. We still need the two levels probably to get a nice scenic break. So we need a we need something there with the maybe I'll have to do maybe I'll have to wrap the tunnel portal and rather than doing an engraved tunnel portal, mm -hmm. I'll have to wrap it in Cornish stone or a version of Cornish stone to give us that more. Just trying. I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think of any tunnels on the line down here. We've got well, there's these only, on. there's only St. Austin has got one because the road to the college goes over the over the thing that the platform ends just before a, a, a bridge. So it's a bridge. Look, it's a bridge more than a tunnel. Well, we could look at the stonework on that it's stone. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. We could look at the stonework it's on the same that. Same as then. the. That's where I had that. The stone we use on the platform. Yes. The platform yep. fronts. Wherever that's gone. That stone. Yeah. That's excuse all this junk. The stone that's on the front of there is actually from St. the retaining wall at the front at uh, outside St. Austell Station. So the bridge is made of that. So that would so be we the could, one to use. We could wrap we could wrap the portal in that, couldn't we? And then we can obviously use that on. Uh, interestingly enough, that's that's the retaining wall, but St. Austell Station platform is actually red brick. Okay. <laughs> it's red brick and pink asphalt, I think, but um, or something like that. But yeah, that would give us that. Right. Okay. So yeah, maybe we could do. We could we could think of a Cornish name, be a made up Cornish name, because we're not modelling anywhere in particular, but we could do something that's inspired by something local. Just call it St. Something. Yeah. More questions? No, just right. suggestions. Alan said in terms of the steelworks made in the shed, the inside of the shed rather than the outside. That would take some detailing, that would, wouldn't it? It'd be good to do. But Christ, that'd be a big project. Andrew's uh, square timber with a slot pushed over the backboards. I take it that's for... Yeah, for that. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Um, the other thing that works for that is you can get some... Called? There's some slide on binding stuff you get from Amazon stationery shops, wherever that fits on here. I used to use it on um, college projects. You slide it over the paper and it's like a U shaped bit of tight plastic. That would work fine. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. And just to sit, just a bead yeah. that sits on the yeah, very top rather than going all down, yeah. down the back. Just over the top. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank well, you, Dave. Let's just have a, just yep. have a pattern. Yeah, done little pieces. Like at the end or middle pieces. Yeah, you could do. Yeah, then you can do your thing. What do you uh, want? Then. Steve says, could you use your photo plank boards as for the sets? Good question. I meant to, meant to cover that earlier. Right, BB19 and 22 are only compatible at the moment with BB18 baseboards. However, I will do a version of this, a version of the BB22 and 19 to fit with this. This is slightly taller, you'd see, taller to fit bigger point motors in than the BB-18. The BB-18 is even shallower because it fits in a 22-litre box. Um, so, yeah, I will do a version. I'll get on it and get it done. Uh, quick one. Tom, could it be made as modules and possibly have members meeting something? That would be... Uh, together as they do in the US. Yeah, that would be really interesting to do, actually. You'd have to, obviously, you'd have to be really, really strict with where your track was going to go. Everybody <laughs> would have to lay their track exactly right. But yeah, it's possible. It would be an interesting project to do that, wouldn't it? That would work. We could have an open day and everybody brings their layouts and we bolt them all together in the yard. Well, you, we could engrave. Yeah. Like that. Well, yeah. We could engrave it, couldn't mm. you? Yeah. If we engrave and, them. And almost number lines. them. Yeah. And then people could say, well, actually, I'm finishing on number yeah. two and four. Yeah. If you like my vertical. main line, so if someone yeah. else finished on two and four, then in theory they would, would just, just work, wouldn't they? go together. So you could have like one, two, three, and four, yeah. depending on if you wanted wide main lines or yeah. narrow. Well, you know, like you know, Pico have got that gauge, yeah, haven't yeah. they? So, you, so you could, just, yeah. Mm. So you could, we could actually engrave streamline mm. main line and whatever the other one is. That'd be like a massive game of consequences. Remember the kids' yeah. game, the consequences, where you used to draw a picture of something and fold <laughs> yeah, it over. Yeah. It'd be like consequences, but in what railway world, wouldn't it? It'd be really interesting. That would be good. Be, yeah. Weird. Oh, we've got some good plans, anyway. Um, just got to make it happen now. 
So we'll get some bits ordered. No idea on track plan, but if we keep it fairly simple, maybe a couple of points, might try and squeeze. If that's going to be a station end, and we have two main lines, I might try and squeeze a point in just to go off to a siding maybe there, disused kind of siding perhaps. Yeah. Maybe or maybe not. Maybe keep it really simple. Unless just you have just, unless you have the sidings this end, so you've got a couple do. of yeah, you've got three lines that go into two because generally when you once True. you're out, yes, you're, out. you're yeah. on to so the we could, yeah, we could do so it probably perhaps this end, wouldn't it? Yeah. If you had the yeah. main two cool. mains here, your other platform would be out of sight. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Perhaps another platform here with another line here, so you had yeah. three. Yeah. Perhaps going into two. Yeah. I was thinking of somehow could we squeeze a old school signal box on there, but I'm not might be able to. Well, we'll we could we'll, be clever we'll, and we'll do we'll like a low out. we could we could be clever yeah. and do a low relief one. We That'd could be we could use yeah, the dapple could, one. Yeah. Perhaps look at our windows. Yeah. Modify. Modify it and only have yeah. a fifty percent of the of the yeah. depth of it and we yeah. could do a semi low relief Dylan's signal probably box. going to pipe up in a bit when he's, if he's watching this Dylan will pipe up and go I've already drawn a box right. we can cut it in half there we go we'll, um, cut, we'll just cut <laughs> it in half Dylan sorry yeah. mate that'll do um, bro right well I'll order some track we'll um, play around with positioning of things and uh, uh, <laughs> yeah and um, we'll get a bit of a what's it a bit of a plan together I think but really really good so Right, I'm going yeah. to carry on cutting then. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I can't remember what that was. That Tina's just written a quote down. That was to Ronnie's, wasn't it? So I suppose oh, in a to Ronnie style, I don't, I don't know what the, what the, what Mark and Wise used to say at the end of their their show. I've no idea. And they used to skip off into the distance, didn't they? They used to do that silly skip thing. Oh, with no, no but that that was the two Ronnie's. It was good night from me. I was going to say I recognise. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Right, guys, I'm going to go and carry on making some stuff. You guys have ordered. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Have a good day. Yes. Yeah, All right. Gonna... Speak to you later. Yeah, cheers, All right. Thank okay. You. Right. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah. Say good night or good afternoon, good morning, whatever it is. Ten fifty-seven. That's not bad. So yeah, in under an hour, we built three baseboards, which isn't too bad. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, and we've got some good ideas, loads of ideas, and probably more ideas than we know what to do with, as far as these are concerned. Um, but thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week at some point. Have a good one. Oh, don't forget railwaymodelers.com or community.railwaymodelers.com if you want to join up and have a look at the new, the new community website. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Ta-da.